So folks, Donald Trump has taken an unimaginable financial loss and he's already whining about it because it's hit him hard. And while everyone is talking about this upcoming fraud trial as if it's not done yet, the jury reached a shocking snap early decision that has ended Donald Trump. And we're going to talk about that. And it's connected to multiple fraud cases when you really break it down. So hit the like and subscribe button. Again, people always ask, how can you help me? Watch all the videos. Watch them all the way through. If you click every single one, the message will spread. And we start with the fact, as a reminder last night, that Trump can't stop whining about money. Uh, an evening of firsts, but something which uh, I proudly state, that I'm the only president that ever lost money while serving in office, and I knew that would happen. I didn't know it was gonna be that much. That's a lot, I lost a lot of, number of billions. But I knew it was part of the game, and that's what I intended. I didn't intend, I could have made a fortune. Oh, I could have gone to these countries and made deals, you know. I put things in trust. I said, my kids are gonna run it. I said, don't do deals outside of the country. Don't do this, don't, they were going, Dad, can we do something? He said, no, you know, I'm president. We have a higher standard. And then I come out and I watch this Biden stuff with, they, they go to make deals with countries that it's just the craziest thing I've ever seen. So again, I, I covered that clip last night in my, my breakdown of that rally. But the reality is Donald Trump is, is sort of being half true there in a sense where, you know, the idea that, oh, he didn't make money during the presidency because he was so honest is a bald faced lie. It's actually the opposite. He tried to make money, but through his own stupidity and through all the legal challenges and everything, he actually is losing money, right? And this new lawsuit has just cost him untold billions. People said it's 250 million, but that's 250 million minimum. He just got rocked and he continues to cry about money. And it's connected to how before, during, and after his time in office, he has really weaponized the uh, image of his wealth to uh, screw the taxpayer, to screw banks, and to screw his own supporters. And here's an example of that. So the pitch sounded awesome. Listen to this. Success at ACN is not a mystery. If you don't succeed, ACN doesn't succeed. ACN uses a model with a proven track record, and it's creating millionaires. Uh, ACN, huh? The, the ACN thing that was supposed to make you a millionaire is this fantastic gizmo. It is a video phone, a miraculous space age invention that lets you see the person you are talking to on the phone. Uh, the thing is though, in order to achieve the privilege of selling this video phone gizmo, you first had to pay the company $499. Then after paying them your own 500 bucks, specifically for the privilege of becoming a salesperson for them, you then had to recruit other people to sell these video phones, or you had to sell a whole lot of them yourself. And selling them turned out to be really hard because they were not really worth buying. This magic ACN video phone gizmo could only be used to call other ACN video phones. So yeah, you could maybe sell one to your mom if she loves you, but she could not use it with anyone else unless you also sold one to your cousin or your aunt. And even then they could only talk to each other, but no one else who didn't have one of these things. You can see why this did not take off. Instead of making money selling ACN video phones, most people who recruited to sell these things lost money. They pumped their savings into the hefty signup fee and then they had to buy inventory to sell and then the company also charged them for training. It all added up to a lot and nobody wanted to buy these things. So some of the people who felt they were duped into this no-win financial black hole of a business scam, um, they sued. They sued over this promise of getting rich that they alleged was materially false. But the people who sued did not sue the company that made these phones. They sued the guy who made the promise. The guy who promised them that signing up and, and, and scrimping together 500 bucks to be able to win the privilege of being allowed to sell these phones, that was what would make them millionaires. You have to remember that. Trump and his team, his family in some cases as well, all played this role 
in using their perceived wealth or perceived or real, depending on the context, usually perceived to try and give an air of credibility to their business claims and their economic claims, uh, uh, endorsing claims when they didn't necessarily have the expertise to make that call or didn't do the due diligence before endorsing a product. And a lot of supporters are mad at them. And when it comes to the properties, it's the same thing. It really is the same thing. And this is just a quick rundown of the case about Donald Trump inflating his wealth. They're talking about this like it already isn't done. I'm going to explain it different. Don't click away thinking that this is old news. This is up to the second. But watch this. New York Attorney General Letitia James is piling on to former President Trump's already enormous legal woes, making public new estimates of just how much she and her office are accusing Trump of inflating his net worth ahead of his October civil fraud trial. Now, in the court filing made public yesterday, she alleges Trump and allies, quote, employed a variety of deceptive schemes to grossly inflate values for many of Trump's assets, from anywhere between roughly $800 million to more than $2 billion. Now, it's worth noting, Trump's team responded in filings Wednesday that the whole case should be thrown out. James, meanwhile, is asking a judge to rule on it without a trial because of the overwhelming off evidence her office says it has presented. Now Again, the entire case is based around Donald Trump inflating his wealth. Right? The entire case is based on that. And it's based on a couple things that Donald Trump is, 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 is getting in trouble for. One is just the, the straight up lying, but also causing harm and his direct role in those actions. And so when it comes to proving that, there was a lot of questions up in the air. And this is where the, the smoking gun evidence hits. And it's something that people haven't talked about for a long time, but I'm really bringing it back like no one else has in a while to talk about it because Donald Trump definitely harmed the banks. Banks could have been smarter dealing with Donald Trump, but when you overinflate how much you're worth, generally that leads to better loan terms. If you say you're worth triple what you are, the bank will give you more money and or will give you that same amount of money at a lower interest rate because you're less of a risk. If you have no money and want to borrow $100,000, the bank's going to be skeptical. But if you have $500,000, you have $500,000, let's say, uh, and, and you want to, to borrow a couple hundred thousand, the bank likely will give you that loan because they, they, say to you, they say to themselves, well, he's got more than enough in assets. Worst case scenario, we have something that we can take from him to cover our loan, minimal risk, we'll give him the money and a decent interest rate at the same time, right? And so the bank is harmed in that process. But you also get to prove that Donald Trump had a role in this, that it wasn't just something nebulously happening at his company, that he would do something and would know better. And this nails him. With respect to Mr. Trump's triplex apartment in Trump Tower, the Office of the Attorney General has discovered that the valuations of this asset, as incorporated into his statements of financial condition since at least 2012, were based on the assertion that the triplex apartment was 30,000 square feet in size. 30,000. The actual size of Trump's triplex apartment was only 10,996 square feet. He lied about the actual square footage of his hands. I mean, his apartment. And, and not, not a little bit. Not like he added an extra room. He said it was three times as big as it actually was. And if you're thinking, oh, maybe, you know, maybe he wasn't lying. Maybe he was just mistaken. How many square feet is my apartment? I don't know. Now, uh, in this case, quote, documents demonstrating that the actual size of Mr. Trump's triplex apartment was only 10,996 square feet were easily accessible inside the Trump organization and were signed by Mr. Trump. But the square footage is just the start. Uh, there's also this, quote, the supporting data for Trump's 2015 financial statement reported the value of his triplex apartment as $327 million. This assertion was repeated in the supporting data for Trump's 2016 financial statement. The valuation of Trump's triplex in the 2015 and 2016, 2016 financial statements were overstated almost by a factor of three as the Trump Organization CFO, Alan Weisselberg, conceded in his testimony to the Attorney General's office. Mr. Weisselberg admitted <laughs> that the valuation of Trump's personal apartment amounted to an overstatement of, quote, give or take $200 million. Give or take. The error there, the overstatement was, give or take $200 million. And just for context here, as of last year, 
the most expensive apartment on the market, not just in New York City, but in the entire nation. The most expensive apartment in the country was $169 million. Trump said his apartment was worth almost double that. Year after year in official financial statements, he said his apartment was worth nearly twice as much as the most expensive apartment in the country. And he said it was three times larger than it actually was, which is wild and flagrant and almost impressively dishonest. And it does make you think back to him bragging about his hand size at the debate. I mean, it's just too on the nose, right? But according to the New York Attorney General, it's not just an interesting like personality pathology. It was part of a pattern of behavior by Donald Trump and his company that was potentially illegal. Quote, since moving to compel the testimony of Donald Trump's son, Eric Trump, in August 2020, the Office of the Attorney General has collected significant additional evidence indicating that the Trump Organization used fraudulent or misleading asset valuations to obtain a host of economic benefits, including loans, insurance coverage, and tax deductions. New York Attorney General Letitia James has been investigating these potentially fraudulent practices for nearly three years. I mean, she's laying it out there, bank fraud, insurance fraud, tax fraud. Now, there is a parallel criminal investigation that's being run by state prosecutors in the Manhattan DA's office. But this investigation by Attorney General Tish James, this is a civil investigation. That means if she finds illegal activity, um, she can bring a lawsuit against the Trump Organization, which is a kind of a bigger deal than it might seem on the surface. Similar lawsuits from the New York Attorney General's office, after all, have succeeded in shutting down Trump's scam university, also his scam charity. Now they've apparently got their sights on his family business. Tish James says in these new filings that her office has not yet determined whether they will take legal action against the Trump organization. Uh, but their investigation would appear to be nearing its end because, you know, they're kind of going after the big fish, if you will. The reason we got this filing late last night is that they're asking a court to compel testimony from Donald Trump himself and from his son, Don Jr., and his daughter, Ivanka, who, of course, were both intimately involved in running the family business. In these latest filings, the attorney general lays out the most detailed allegations we have yet seen about the potentially fraudulent activity at the Trump family business that the AG is investigating. Again, that's something people have forgotten about, that Donald Trump didn't just lie about complicated accounting practices, because then you might be able to make the argument that Donald Trump is not a trained accountant, he's not even a bookkeeper, he doesn't have, you know, he's not a, a chartered financial professional in any way. And you could make the argument that somewhere along the line, yes, ultimately we know he's at fault, but like you could make the, you're trying to, again, trying to make the legal argument that somewhere along the line, whether it was at the banks, his accounting firms, his in-house financial people, someone else did it uh, and, and Donald Trump didn't do it or he didn't do it on purpose. And he, it's too complicated. He wouldn't have known better. But what that clip notes is that Donald Trump lied about the very size of his own apartment, tripling it in size. That's something that Donald Trump would understand because everyone basically has an understanding of how big their property is, especially someone who likes to brag about that like Donald Trump, obsessed with the size of his buildings. And Donald Trump's one business that he does do is like real estate, buildings, building buildings, owning buildings, renting buildings, renting spaces within those buildings. Donald Trump should have at least a intermediary knowledge of the size of his apartment. And so lying about that, which would greatly increase your value because you think of how, how expensive one square foot of property is in downtown New York, tripling that square foot to three square feet is tripling the value in some ways, right? It shows his guilt. It shows that the jury has nailed him. Again, this is like the Gene Carroll case and everything. It is. You don't need to hear the official verdict to know he's lost. Donald Trump is lost and it's going to be way more than 250.